going in for Rylan Chisholm. Got Michelle Barrett also from Anderson, Indiana in the 79. And then on back, it looks like we got a few scratches there. There's 122, Nathan No. 47 will be Eric Lewis. Got Tim Smith there in the 51, Cody Street in the 959. Jody Stewart in the 50. And in the 21M, I believe he is also a scratch, going to race the big track. And right there on the front stretch, you see the 26. That's Katie St. Clair. She's going to do one lap in this right now in memory of River Bouchel. Lost his life here just a couple months ago. Uh, they were just married for uh, like a month or so, and he was tragically killed in a car wreck. Uh, he was going to have a car built just similar to that car right there. That's his scheme and color and number, everything that they was going to work on. So they, her and the crew, work feverishly to get that car ready for this event. So she's going to take one lap right now in his memory. As you see, quite a few cars making this event, 30-lap feature. Crown Vic's on the short track for the on-site plumbing, heating, and air division. Just about got them all situated there. On back there, you see uh, the 777, Harley Thurman out there. Joe Allen in the 0A. C.J. Grider in the 30. 69M. I believe that's T.J. Moore. Chris Hagen in the 357. I think he's a scratch. I think that's Will Jaggers in the 33. And in the 06, I believe that's probably... Mm. So getting ready and set. We usually don't see this many cars on the quarter-mile track. Now the big story with this inner track is the flat banks, of course. You'll see a lot of dirt. It happens every time. There's a little bit of a rut fall off around turns one and two and three and four. And you're going to see a lot of dirt get thrown up on the racing surface. And this is not what you want because it becomes a slippery ice rink when that happens with these cars. It's almost like a little bit of gritty sand, if you will. You know how slippery those can get. You're going to see some of that happen with over this many cars, over 25 cars here in this event. This is going to get very interesting. And looking all the way through back here, a lot of these guys have not competed here or it's been a while. I mean, you, you alluded to it. Michelle Barrett back there usually competes at the Mount Lawn Speedway. Picked up the Powder Puff win on September, I believe, back in October. Actually, it was a Sunday afternoon. October 7th, I believe, she picked up a Powder Puff win. Looking on through the field here, you have the number 51. You have Tim Smith out there in that entry. You have Cody Street. 959, you have Will Jaggers. You have a lot of different cars out here in this one, Hawk. It's going to be very interesting here momentarily. Yeah, we've seen some races here on this short track on that quarter mile in there. It's a flat track in there. It's sometimes kind of hard to pass, but when you got this many cars, they're going to run into a lot of lap traffic. Remember, this is a 30-lap event, so I think lap traffic is going to be the biggest key here as these guys and gals try to work their way through all that traffic. And if I, my counting is correct, we have exactly 30 cars Ready to go for this 30-lap event. Going to be very interesting, like you alluded to, the front row. Very tough competitors. But you don't want to be hung up on the outside. You, you can't see really any passing, or you can't get any kind of grip. You want to be down on the inside groove, and that's exactly where Troy Phillips is in that 39, and right behind him, Jamie Harbin. That's exactly where she wants to be. 
Now, Aaron C. to her outside in that 201. Looking back, Doug Wicker already a couple wins to his credit this year in the 2023 season. One to go at the line, getting ready and set for the first event of the night of the weekend here at the Halloween 200 presented by Kentucky Anna Ford Dealers. Hawk getting ready to get real here on the quarter mile here at Salem Speedway. All right, one more time around. We'll look to go green, have a good start here, have a good start to this weekend. It's going to be a very interesting event here. A lot of cars out there on that short track. Got a lot of good com competitors up front there, so a lot of different ones can take this victory. Of course, Troy Phillips on the pole in the 39, a veteran of street stocks and extreme ovals, if you will. We'll see how he does here on that front road. Here we go. Troy Phillips set to lead us to the green flag off turn number four in the first event of the weekend is underway. Here we go. Troy Phillips brings us to the line. Going to race down side by side into turns number one and two. And Troy Phillips, you can see a little bit already of the dirt kind of going up on the surface. There it goes again. Rollin Chisholm getting in. But here comes Jamie Harbin. She wants to get to the inside left rear of Derek Smith. You want to be on that inside. You do not want to be hung up on the outside. First lap completed, it's Troy Phillips in the 39, leading the way, side by side for second. Harbin on the inside, Derek Smith still up on that outside, trying to hang on. Down the back straight away they go, good battle for the number two spot. Jamie Harbin still trying to hold off, it looks like she will. She'll get a tap from behind from Doug Wickers, number seven. And Derek Smith in no man's land, hug up on the outside. We'll keep an eye on that 64 now. He's getting a little squirrely in turns one and two, losing ground. Here comes the 201, AJC now on the inside. Yeah, watch out for the AJC number 201 machine. He always tough no matter what track he races at. Doug Wicker now comfortably moves into the number three spot. Yellow flag out for the number 41 of Tyler Payne. And a little bit of smoke, looked like brake smoke from Todd Harrison, 06. So, Hawk, there is the first caution flag of the weekend. Three laps down, 27 to go. And right now, Troy Phillips, Jamie Harbin, and Doug Wicker, your top three here early going. Yeah, as we've seen there on early going there, the 64, Derek Smith really having trouble hanging on on that outside groove. So these restarts where they double file them up, anybody on that outside needs to be ready to to try to get down on that inside as best as they can because right now it doesn't look like a whole lot of grip out there on that outside groove. Yep, absolutely, and just uh, kind of checking it over a little bit, looking back through the pack. A lot of these guys are going to run in that big 200-lap main event here tonight. We're slated to have 66 starters in that event coming up a little bit later on in the main event tonight. Tomorrow, of course, we have the Main event, the 35th running of the Halloween 200, presented by Kentucky and Ford Dealers. And tonight, Red Ball Recycling, Spooky 200, going to take place. So here we go. you you got to be smart about this. Not a lot of passing. We know that. you got to be on that inside line. You've got to use that bumper on any short track in America you go to. But one with hardly any banking, you really have to be aggressive, Hawk, with that front bumper because we know the outside groove's not going to do it. Two laps down, we go back a lap. 28 laps remain. If you're in the back, you have to go. I mean, there, there's no saving your time in a quarter-mile race here at Salem Speedway. So how aggressive do you, are you going to be in the back of the pack? Yeah, it's going to be tough back there. And as you said, you know, you don't want to get down there in that dust and – it's hard on that outside, so they're going to be pinning right up against that grass on those turns, trying to make it as tight as they can, try to get on the inside of the car in front of them. If they make one little slip, they can maybe get right in there. So the word is from Race Control, I believe the 721 is going to be back in the tail as well because he was the helper, if you will, of the 41 spinning. 51, he'll go to the tail end with him. So there you see Embry going to the back of the tail end. He'll be back there with number 41. Two to go next time by. They'll double up, getting ready for the restart. 20 
Eight laps remain of the 30 scheduled here tonight. Troy Phillips, Jamie Harbin, and 64 of Derek Smith. So Embry having a little bit of issue with that call of him going to the rear end as well. So he will get a chance to join the tail end or he will be sent pit side. So that is going to be up to him, of course. Two to go and choose. Next time by two to go and choose. Field doubles up, exiting turns number two right now. Troy Phillips, Jamie Harbin now hung up on the outside. This is exactly kind of what Derek Smith wanted, Hawk, that, uh, you know, the caution came out. Now he has the inside because he was losing ground going to the back. Yes, he was. He was fading pretty quickly there, but now he's in good position. It's interesting, Jamie Harbin in the 67 chose that outside to go to the outside of row one. Now, she loves that outside group normally. I know the last race uh, I called here back a few months ago, she did have trouble on that outside, but uh, evidently maybe feeling pretty confident. She wants to give it a go. Maybe she can get a good start on this restart and see what happens, see if she can outrun Troy Phillips to the line. That's going to be the go. We'll find out here in a, just a moment. Coming to the restart, two by two down the back straight away they go. Troy Phillips, Jamie Harbin, Derek Smith, your top three. 28 laps up on the board left to go. Two laps complete officially. Here we go. At a snail's pace, two by two, entering turns three and four, and we are underway. Troy Phillips, good start by him. How is Jamie Harbin going to handle this? J. Rob Masterson, he is behind Jamie. But here comes Derek Smith. Now he'll have the inside advantage. Drag race between those two cars down the back straightaway. Yeah, we see Jamie Harbin at 67 now. She's on that outside trying to make it stick. But Derek Smith and S64 nosing her out for second, and he's trying to keep pace with that 39 of Troy Phillips. So that's the story here. So Jamie Harbin now hung up on the outside. Whoa, Jamie Harbin gets up on the inside or the outside retaining wall. And she went two-wheel rolling down the front straightaway, so we'll have to keep an eye on any damage, but she'll get in front of Aaron Cease 201. Very interesting there, and you see Jamie Harbin kind of hit that outside retaining wall. You see a good battle for second there. Doug Wicker right there on the bumper of Derek Smith in a 64. Almost got position there in turns one and two, but had to back off. No doubt, five laps up on the board, and Jamie Harbin trying to stay now in that fourth spot as the 33 goes slow from the high side. He'll move out of the way. Right now, Troy Phillips pulling away from Derek Smith's number 64 down the back straightaway. The number seven of Doug Wicker right there in third. Jamie Harbin, Aaron Seager, top five. Looking on back, J. Rob Masterson's outside of that as the 201 gets in the rear end just a little bit of Jamie Harbin. And, of course, there's single foul now. And as we said earlier, lap traffic may come into play. They're going to come around. The leaders are to complete lap number eight. But they're going to come into two slot of lap traffic. So we'll see how this plays into this race. Absolutely. Around the speedway working right now. Eight laps up on the board. Everyone filters out. Eight laps up on the board. Still Troy Phillips up on top. He is lead let every race one gets a loose exiting turns number two and that is i believe joe allen zero one or will jaggers we don't know really who's in that car tonight it was kind of a toss-up when those two drivers this afternoon so now we're getting some consecutive laps all cars all spread out around salem speedways inner track here this afternoon so now doug wicker amps up the aggression as does jamie harbin those three cars battling for position as of course hawk here we go we talked about it troy phillips has a lot of lap cars or slower traffic right in front of him yes they come around and complete lap, lap number 11 out of 30 so still a lot of time left but troy phillips going to have to navigate through traffic we got trouble in turns three and four a lot of cars making contact over there caution coming out caution coming out Big gaggle of cars over in turns three and four, and that is exactly what you don't want to see because some of those cars are in the Spooky 200 tonight. Todd Harrison 06 took a lot of damage there. 
A lot of left front damage on that car, so we'll have to see what happened. You know, we just saw it kind of boggling up over there in turns number three, Hawk, and uh, that's exactly the product. You, you have 30 cars out there, and you don't have much to work with on a quarter mile here at Salem Speedway. Yeah, it looks like he might be the only one that cannot move. We see the 30 is C.J. Grider taking it to the pit area with some damage over there. But it looks like the 06 is going to need to need a little assistance to get off the track after this one. But officially showing 11 laps on the board out of this 30-lap event for the on-site plumbing, heating, and air. Crown Vic's on the short track, so we'll see if we can get 06 up on the hook and get all the cars lined up and get back to green flag racing. But this is something that I think Troy Phillips liked to see. So we're getting word red flag is out. Washington County EMS going to be called to the help of the 06 machine. So they are calling for the medical team to come over in exit of turns number four. So red flag, first red flag of the weekend as the Eddie Gilstrap pace vehicle makes his way back out to the quarter mile. So you never you never like to see that Hawk GB down there talking to that driver. Hopefully all is okay, but uh, red flag out on the speedway. Race fans, don't forget the concession stand is open behind the main grandstands and the inside in the pit area in turns number one. Merchandise up for grabs back there in the concourse as well. We thank everyone for coming out today to the 35th annual running of the Kentucky Anna Ford Dealers Halloween 200 weekend. We're going to take a brief break here. Red flag on the speedway. Race fans, Will Greenwell here, and I'm here to tell you about the all-new podcast, The Wild Will Throwdown. Each week, we go in-depth with racing results from around the area, preview the upcoming schedules, and have special guests on each week. You can find our podcast by going to a search bar on any internet search and typing in The Wild Will Throwdown. Join myself, Wild Will Greenwell, and Hawk Harold Adams each week for The Wild Will Throwdown.
All right, you see the cars rolling out now, single file. We'll get these cars back double fouled up here in just a little bit. We'll let them do the choose again. We'll see what happens. Of course, we see Troy Phillips in the 39, your leader, 11 laps through this event. It was just about to get into some heavy traffic, so he did not mind the stoppage here, I'm sure. He's got some clean air now in front of him again. We'll see what Derek Smith in the 64 wants to do, running in second. Of course, we've seen on the initial start, he did not fare too well in that outside groove. But you got the heavy hitter there, Doug Wigger, was putting a lot of pressure on that 64. So we'll see what these guys want to do. Still a lot of time left in this 30-lap event. Of course, looking on back there, Jamie Beerman in the 67, running fourth, and AJC running fifth in the 201. On back there, you got J. Rob Masterson in the 32. There's John Lister in the 45, Nick Payne in the 49, Jake Wells in the 13. Of course, Jake, last year's winner of the spooky race here on Halloween weekend. He's going to try to make it two in a row. Right now, he'd like to get a good finish here on the 30-lap short track event for the Crown Vicks, the on-site plumbing, heating, and air 30-lap event. We're going to try to get these cars lined back up. We see one car sitting there in turn one. And he'll pick up on the tail there. Of course, we also got the Crown Vicks running on the figure eight course here in a little bit. And the Salem Supercars with a feature as well. And then, of course, the main event tonight, Spooky 200, Red Ball Recycling Spooky 200, presented by Kentucky and Ford Dealers and NOS Energy Drink. 66 cars scheduled for that big track Crown Vic event. Cannot wait for that one to see what unfolds. And now we're going to double them up here. We're going to let them choose. Of course, Troy Phillips at 39, your leader. We'll see what happens. Looks like Derek Smith going to stay to the inside. And there goes Doug Wicker moving to the outside. And at seven on the outside of your leader. Jamie Beerman Harbin on the outside in row two. AJC in the 201 will be on the inside row three. And J. Rob Masterson on the outside. On that right side of rear two. Stack up. Got a couple over there. We know it's going to cross. All right, looks like we got one to go, one to go. We're ready to go back green flag racing after that incident over there in turn three and four. Troy Phillips in the 39 and his buddy Doug Wicker on the outside of him in the seven. See if they play nice with each other. Friendly, friendly fire, if you will. Doug Wicker got a strong car in that seven. We'll see what he can do here on that outside groove, though. All right, they come around now, picking up pace here out of turns three and four. A little bit of contact. Green flags out. We're underway. Doug Wigger tucks quickly in behind Troy Phillips in the 39. Derek Smith on the inside. We'll see what happens. Jamie Beardman Harbin on the outside. See if she can make it stick out there. As they come around to complete lap number 12. Jamie Harbin now tucks in behind Derek Smith. 
into fourth place. J. Rob Matterson back here in fifth, your top five. Coming around now, complete lap number 13. Doug Wicker putting on the pressure on your leader, the 39 Troy Phillips, as both of those cars now try to pull away a little bit from the rest of the field. Derek Smith in third, trying to hold off Jamie Beerman in the 67. Fourteen laps in the books now. And if we'll stay green here, these cars will have to get in that lap traffic again, and I really think that's going to decide things, could shake things up. Right now they're going at single file. 15 down, 15 to go. Halfway home now for Troy Phillips. Doug Wicker right there on that bumper, letting him know he is still right there. Derek Smith trying to keep pacing his 64. And there's a little contact there, three and four. Doug Wicker gets a little turned around as they stacked up. He maintains it. We stay green. They do pull away a little bit. The front two, definitely the strongest cars we see right now. Doug Wigger really pushing it hard in that seven. Waiting for Troy Phillips to make some kind of mistake. Both of them, though, crafty veterans. They know what they're doing. They probably know each other's racing style. As they come around out of four, complete lap number 18. 12 laps to go. The laps keep ticking away here as they near the end of the pack and get into that lap traffic you see a couple cars there getting together right there in front of your leaders they maintain things that's the old OA there Joe Allen and the 69 M now they got the the track kind of blocked there your leaders trying to get through there goes Troy Phillips on the inside three wide makes it through safely Almost near disaster there for your leader, but Troy Phillips was patient, made it through on the inside. Doug Wicker, second, Derek Smith, third, Jamie Beerman, fourth, J. Rob Masterson, fifth, your top five. As they survive that first little wave of lap traffic, 21 down, nine to go. See your leaders now coming up on some more lap traffic. It's 79, Michelle Barrett. As Troy Phillips goes to the inside of that 79. See the 33 there on the outside. Some tr more trouble down in turns three and four. Looks like they get off the track, but yellow coming out, yellow coming out. Looks out, more contact on the front stretch. Look out, Jerry Embry in the 751. Going for a wild ride into the infield. Gathers it up without any damage, probably. But they got a little little crazy there right as the caution came out. Seems like turns three and four with all the action right now. But once again, Troy Phillips enjoying that caution again as he was getting ready to navigate some laugh traffic. But now he's going to see that clean air again with 22 laps on the board out of 30 for this on-site plumbing, heating, and air 30-lap event for the short track Crown Vickers. So it looks like track crew got a little bit of a mess to clean up there in turns three and four. As I said, something going on down there in that turn. Seems like that's where all the cars getting together. So left back a little bit of debris and some fluid there. Track officials will take care of the situation.
So we're, of course, we got some of these cars. Gonna also going to do the figure eight here in a little bit. And also the big tracks. Some guys going to try all three events. Why not? Late in the season. Try to get as many races in as you can here before the off season. So some of these guys are gung-ho, ready to do it all. But some of them focusing just on that big track, that spooky 200, dialing in their cars specifically for that because a lot of these guys like to make the, the uh, big adjustments and so forth to the front end and suspension and everything. But some of these guys are going to do it all. So we are fine with that. But as you see, a good amount of cars here in this race here. Nine laps to go as we're getting ready to go back green here shortly. Yeah, absolutely. Hawk Harold Adams getting ready and set. Uh, nine laps going to be left in this on-site plumbing, heating, air crown Vic event. As I'm working hard over here on the notes here for the spooky 200 introductions, making sure all 66 drivers are in. So I appreciate you uh, for announcing most of this event here as I'm trying to work getting all these 66 cars in order, lined up and ready to go here for tonight's action as we have about nine more laps of this race left to go. And uh, Troy Phillips has led from the get-go. Doug Wicker there in that number two spot. Also Derek Smith. But now here's what you're going to see. Doug Wicker is going to be hung up on the outside. So how aggressive will Doug and Troy Phillips... Now, now you know Doug Wicker's daughter married to Troy Phillips. So I don't know how this is going to work here. Yeah, they, uh, they've known each other for a long time. As I said, they know each other's style. Probably going to have a little fun. So we'll see what happens there if Doug Wigger wants to go to the outside or go down on that inside and stay on Troy's bumper right there. Maybe he has a plan on that last lap to make some kind of move and uh, maybe spin out his old buddy Troy. Yeah, we'll have to find out. Nine laps a long way around, so we're going to find out what's going to happen as Cody Street's going to make his way back out in the number 959 machine. See you head off down the front straight away here. So the Eddie Gilstrap Motors Pace Vehicle, a lot of safety team this weekend, going to utilize that truck as well to make sure the track is A-OK. -okay. 21 laps up on the board. Troy Phillips, Doug Wicker, Derek Smith, Jamie Harbin, J-Rob Masterson. Now J-Rob Masterson has had a great year as well in the Crown Vic division on the small track. Has played around with the figure eight just a little bit. Also, don't forget, we got the Crown Vic figure A. We got 11 cars, and 11 cars on this track. We've seen a great show with six cars, so it's going to be pretty interesting coming up here momentarily. But the, the key is we're going to try to keep this show moving along because, as everyone knows, once the dark time falls, the inner track becomes dark, and that is not what we want out there on the inner track. So that is why we had all of those first, and 5 o'clock, of course. Brand new lights around the track. And they'll be lit up for the Spooky 200 tonight, presented by Derby City Recycling. Brand new Salem Speedway scoreboard on the back stretch. Beautiful, beautiful scoreboard. Race monitor working today, so uh, all is well here at Salem Speedway. Nick and Megan Bohannon put in a lot of great work into this facility. We're excited for 2024. A lot of great events left to be announced for next year, so we're very excited for that in the 2024 campaign here at Salem Speedway. And, of course, all of our marketing partners who made 2023 such a great success here, especially NOS Energy Drink coming on board as a sponsor here. Pretty awesome to have NOS Energy Drink on board with us as the Pace Vehicle Safety Team, sponsored by Safety Clean, the Impact Rescue Safety Team. I'm going to pull off the racetrack. GB down there telling them to double up, double up signal. And, Hawk, we're getting ready. Hopefully we can finish this last nine laps to see who's going to pick it up here on the first event of the night. All right. We're going to double them up here. We'll see how the lineup shakes up. Looks like Doug Wicker wants to stay on the inside. Derek Smith wants to stay on the inside. That's going to move Jamie Harbin all the way up to the front in that 67. J. Rob Masterson now will be on the outside of row two. So Derek Smith will be on the inside of row three, and there's Alan Wagner with a good run in the 97. He'll be on the outside of row three. 
As the field continues to assemble and pull up there, we'll get ready to give them the one-to-go signal one more time around. We'll see if we can go nine laps here without any more cautions. Let these guys play it out. Jimmy Bourbon Harbin at 67, as I said, likes that outside groove, but it is really tough here on that short track. But she is right there in position. We've seen Troy Phillips get some really good starts on these restarts. We'll see if Jamie Harbin can maybe match that start and try to at least gain a little advantage going into one. We'll see how it plays out here right now as they're getting ready to go green. There goes Troy Phillips with another good start. Green flag is out. Doug Wicker right there on the bumper of Troy Phillips. Jamie Beerman Harbin now trying to survey on the outside. Down the back stretch they go. Troy Phillips on the inside. Doug Wigger going to push him up to the front. Jamie Beerman hung up. Jamie Harbin hung up. Oh, J. Rob Masterson hard into the outside retaining wall. And he made contact as I saw that all happening as it unfolded. And J. Rob Masterson just into the outside retaining wall, and that's not a good. We just talked about J. Rob Masterson and a lot of damage. Looks like he's going to be able to pull away, and he is not happy. No, he had a pretty good run there. As you said, he's had some good runs here at Salem, but it got into the wall hard as it. But as we've seen, these Crown Vicks can really take a beating, and he gets that thing back fired up. I don't know how much damage he's got. I'm sure he has some damage. That wall's not very soft right there. We'll see if he takes it pit side or not. He's going to stay out on the track for now. As you see the track crew picking up the pieces left behind from that 32 machine. It looks like he's going to try to stay out there and finish this on out the rest of the way, but tough break there for 32 J. Rob Masterson. As he'll have to pick up on the tail if that car is still good to go. It looks like he is, so we'll have to assemble this field again. Still 21 laps shown on the board out of 30 laps. So once again, these drivers will have to decide who wants to take that outside groove. We've seen the last time the top three settle in where they were, and Jamie Beerman went all the way up to the front on the outside. We'll see if that happens again. We keep seeing Troy Phillips in that 39 get some really good starts on these restarts. He is really ready to go and ready to hit that throttle. He's been timing it out really good, so he'll have to do it one more time here. Making him work hard for this thing, fight off the wolves, if you will. He knows Doug Wicker's got that strong car in that seven. Breathing down his neck. Any little mistake that 39's going to make, Doug Wicker in the seven's going to take advantage of it for sure. And race fans, don't forget, after this event is the burnout competition. Now, 
There is a hundred dollars cash up for grabs and a trophy. If anyone in the stands is interested, it's absolutely free admission. Take your car or vehicle or whatever you got to the on track gate. So Hawk Harold Adams will be down there and getting ready and set for that as we get ready to crown a winner to the burnout contest. So if you're in the crowd, it's free to enter. Absolutely free. Burnout competition, one hundred dollar crisp bill, and of course a big trophy. So if you're interested in that, That'll be at this after this event. So free burnout competition, and you can win some money. So how about that, Hawk Garrett Adams? I know you're thrilled about that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they have a whole lot of entries just yet, so we need to get some more people interested in that. If you think you can, think you can handle that, come away with some easy $100 cash, and you get a trophy too, why not give it a whirl? That's coming up right after this event. Still nine laps left to go as we see them all doubled up, and there's Jamie Beerman Harbin. Going to try that outside groove on the outside row one of Troy Phillips in the 39. And green flag is out. Here we go. Again, Troy Phillips with a good start. He has been dandy on those restarts. Jamie Beerman Harbin now. Let's see what she does there side by side with Doug Wicker. Can she get a good bite on that outside groove? Coming out of four to complete lap number 22. Doug Wicker now pulling up a little bit ahead of the 67. Four second. Harbin now trying to hold off Derek Smith in the 64. She indeed does tuck in behind the seven in the third place. Derek Smith back to fourth, and there's AJC. Excuse me, Alan Wagner, the 97 fifth, gets a little squirrely. AJC right there behind her. They have one car off the track right there in turn four safely, I believe, at the on-track entrance. We're going to stay green. 24 laps shown on the board. Coming around now, five laps to go for Troy Phillips. With Doug Wicker right there behind him on that bumper. Does Doug Wicker have anything for Troy Phillips? Twenty-six laps down, four to go this time. Top four cars there pulled away from the rest of the field a little bit. The 39, 7, 67, and 64. Three laps go. Look out. The whole one spinning right in front of Troy Phillips. Gathers it up. There goes Doug Wicker. Well, on the inside. Blasting the side of the 39, Troy Phillips. There goes Doug Wicker around. All kinds of chaos going on and turns one and two. Caution out. Caution out. All kinds of chaos. We talked about the slower traffic. The old the zero A got all out of shape right in front of your leader and just caused all kinds of mayhem, Will. Yeah, this is exactly what we talked about and it happened. Just in fruition, actually. I mean, Doug Wicker, he was trying to avoid the number zero A of Allen and he just dive bombed it into the infield and unfortunately took out his son in law. Troy Phillips. So how about that? That's going to be a fun Thanksgiving dinner. You see all the cars moving around, so not much damage. So we'll see where they all get sorted out after that. I'm not sure how how we're going to line things up. You see Troy Phillips still out in front right now. Yeah, that that's that's intense. I mean, uh, you know that that's just the the hints of. Uh, lap cars if you will i mean that you have to navigate you have to use them as picks but uh unfortunately we see this a time after time that uh, this does happen and there you see the number 39 troy phillips he is going to go to the back he is not going to overtake that lead again so there you see doug wicker going off the track he's got looks like his uh, left rear door hanging off of that thing, so he's going to have to take it pit side. But guess who this puts up into the number one spot now? Jamie Harbin, who's won a lot, many-time champion at the Sportstrom Speedway. 
And she has a lot of fans out there, a lot of Sports Drone faithful fans. And Jamie Harbin, can she park it in victory lane here this afternoon? So we saw Troy Phillips. This is a big story. We, he led 27 laps, and now here we are, the final three. You just never know. Yeah, he looked like he was going to win this thing for sure. I mean, he had the pressure from the seven, Doug Wicker, but it looked like everything was settled in. We was about ready to call it a race. And then, as we said, lap traffic come into play, come into play big time. And uh, that was really crazy how that played out. And after you said it, Look out who's out front now, the 67, as they double up here. And look at here, AJC going to the outside front row now. This could get interesting with a three-lap shootout here ready to go. Derek Smith will be on the inside of row two. And looks like Nick Payne now, out of nowhere in the 49, he'll be on the outside of row two. One lap to green. We're going to have a shootout, Hawk Harold Adams. This is what we live for in the racing world. And here we go. You got to be aggressive now. That's the key. Three lap shootout around the quarter mile here at Salem Speedway as Doug Wicker makes his way back out in the number seven car. Here we go, Hawk. Finish us out. Here we go. Lead us back to the green flag. All right. We're trying to go green this time around. Three lap dash. Jamie Harbin, Beerman. AJC on that front row. Here we go. A little contact out of four. Green flags out. And a great start for the 67. Pulling away. There goes Derek Smith trying to get on the inside of AJC, and he does down the back stretch. Derek Smith with a good run there into second. And here comes Nick Payne coming up on the 201. As AJ still hung up on that outside, going into turns one and two, contact between the 49 and the 201. We'll see the white flag this time around. Jamie Beerman Harbin in the 67. Just has to hold off Derek Smith down to 64. On back there, you see a good battle for third. A lot of contact, the 49 and 201, and there's the 97. So they're almost going three wide down the back stretch. Keep your eye on that as they come around to get the checkered flag. It's going to be the 67, Jamie Beerman Harbin. Derek Smith second and third will be possibly Nick Payne in the 49. And that's how they're going to round out in the on-site plumbing. He did an air crown Vic 30 here this afternoon. Jamie Harbin parks it on top of the board. In that number 67, Merrill Beerman excavating machine. ICA Dempsters on board as well as many other sponsors on that entry. Hawk Carrot Adams will go down and get a word with those podium spots. Once again, anybody interested in the burnout competition, you can actually enter for free. It's $100 cash for the winner and a trophy. And Hawk Harold Adams is going to stay down there for that event. So that is what's going to come up here a little bit later on today. So Jamie Harbin going to pull into the Red Bomb Recycling Victory Lane. She'll stop it there in the gas and stuff. ICA Dumpster. Cato Concrete entry. Derek Smith going to pull down there as well. He is your second place finisher. And Aaron C. believe he has scored with the number three podium spot. So there she is, Jamie Harbin. And Aaron C., I believe they're saying you were fourth, my friend. So Aaron C., fourth is what they're saying. So you're good to go to, to the back, my friend, I believe is what they're saying. And Hawk Carrot Adams down there. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 champion, John Lister, in the Crown Vicks on the small track. 
And I have to say, I like your shirt down there, John Lister. It brought you a little bit of luck at the Wild Will Throwdown. So good job. I like that. Hawk Harold Adams, we got a little bit of different. We know the mic hasn't worked before, so we came prepared this weekend. Take it away, buddy. All right, thank you, Will Green. Will, all right, we'll get our top three here, first podium finishers. Jamie Beerman Harbin, I'm right here. All right. We're a little bit happy down here. I know it's a, always been a struggle here to get the victory here, always tough. I tell you what, that was really interesting. You, you played that outside groove like you wanted on a lot of those restarts. Didn't quite work out. And then they had all kinds of things going on up front, but you were right there to take that victory. How's that feel? Dad told me every time you get a chance to go to the inside, stay on the inside, and I didn't listen at all, um, which I, I usually don't with him. But I don't know. I mean, just luck at the end. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Everybody started turning around, and I was trying to miss everybody and just right place, right time. Well, you put yourself in position. There was a whole lot of cars, 30 cars there. You put yourself in position to be where you needed to be. So who you want to thank here on this car here today, getting you up here, first place here in the 30-lap event? Yeah, Mom, Dad, Josh, all my guys. Um, we had one heat race win at the Sports Drone. We This is our first feature win in the Ford all year. So I'm um, pretty excited about it. All my guys that come out and, and help us all year and uh, just a great way to close the year out. All right, there you have it. First place in our first event of the weekend, Jamie Beerman Harbin. All right, second place. Come on over here, Derek. Derek Smith in the 64. Derek, that outside groove, tough. You, you tried it a couple times there, and then you, you, you tucked right in there behind him and tried to do the best you could. Look like you're a pretty good running car, though. Uh, yeah, right there at the beginning, I uh, had a start on the outside, so we kind of knew what we had there, and it wasn't much. Uh, so from that point on, it was hold the bottom and try to survive. Uh, that, Like Jamie said, cars went everywhere right there. Me and her came out of it, and uh, I knew it was going to be a shootout there, but I wasn't going to the high side. All right, are you getting ready for the big track race, or are you trying to figure eight course two today? Uh, no, no, no figure eight today, um, but yeah, we're going to try the high bank. Uh, it's been pretty bad to me today, but we'll see what we got. Who do you want to thank real quick here to get your second place in this event? Um, I really don't have any sponsors on this car, but KB Contracting, FGG with Ken and Craig and all of them, everything they do for me all year. Um, Cats Plus, I got a ton of sponsors, just none on this car, so it's hard to remember them all, but thank you to everybody. All right, congratulations. Derek Smith in the 64, second place. All right, who we got third here? There he is. All right, here he is, Nick Payne in the 49. I tell you what, that was a little bit of a rough ride there. A lot of things going on up front. All of a sudden, we on that last restart, we was like, hey, there's the 49 up there. So you worked your way up there, and... Uh, I know y'all was battling back here pretty hard for third, so what do you think about that race here today? Yeah, I like it rough, so that's uh, that's cool. Now, the 49 is always going to be there no matter what race it's in. I got to thank uh, all the PBR crew, my uncle especially. Uh, he works on this thing every day. So uh, we weren't the fastest today, but we were there at the end, and that's what matters. Yeah, you got your podium finish. And who you want to thank some sponsors here real quick before we go? I uh, definitely got to thank New Directions Bar and Grill, uh, Independent Steel, uh, Scotty Holbert, All-Star Truck Repair, helped us out a lot this year, and uh, that's about it. All right, there you have it, third place today in the first event, 49, Nick Payne. We still have John Lister out here. Maybe we have a word with John, our champion here. Come on over here, John. We, we're not going to forget about you, buddy. I was looking for him. Not hard to, to miss this guy, but he's just a big gentle bear. Hey, he won the championship. How's that feel? I mean, it feels great. We had a we had a hell of a week trying to get everything together and uh, for the big race and stuff like that. And I can't I can't thank my brother enough uh, and everybody at Gamblers because we uh, we've had a long two three weeks to get ready and uh, it paid off. So uh, I can't I can't complain. Well, there you have it. You're going to run the figure eight course today, or are you going to skip that and just run the big track? <laughs> to be determined. <laughs> All right. You'll have much time. Because that will be the next race after the burnout contest. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I also, I want to thank Mike Sell. You know, the family's up there. Mike Sell's back here. He's running in 200. And uh, I want to thank Independent Steel. Uh, those two 
have came back aboard this year and, and made it all possible for me. Uh, I want to thank Kara Gale. She came, she came aboard late in the year. Um, I also want to thank Gambler's Garage and uh, Q Labs and Diesel Boys. Uh, where, I guess Brandon's here somewhere. Uh, but it's a, it's a huge thing to win a championship here because there's so many competitors that you got to beat. There you have it, your champion 2023, Mr. John Lester. He is the champion on the short track this year, the on-site plumbing, heating, and air cars. So we're going to get things cleared away here and get ready for the burnout contest. Do we have any takers, I wonder? Anybody so I believe, afraid to do the burnouts up there? Yep, check one. So I believe, Hawk, we got a couple. I believe the call is anyone in the stands interested. If you are competing in that burnout competition, you need to be making your way to staging down at the on-track gate. I believe we have two. $100 and a trophy going to the winner. So anybody can do it if you're interested. You can go get your personal vehicle of whatever you got and make your way to the gate on the on-track gate, Hawk. And, uh... I know you'll be talking to the winner down there, and it'll be by crowd applause, so that's always fun. And once again, congratulations to all of the winners here in the on-site plumbing, heating, air, crown, Vic division. So back to you, Hawk. All right, you see John Lister getting his champion picture down there by some of my fellow c photographers. I'm uh, giving up the camera tonight for the mic. I'd love to be out here taking pictures. Uh, this is a really good venue to take photographs up but it can be frustrating because it is kind of big it's like last year at the Holloway 200 I was in the infield I was in turn three when Brian Baum or excuse me Austin Baum flipped over the wall in turn one I didn't even see it I was way over at the other side of the track oh I, I heard some noise I turned around all I seen was dust of course he was off over in the field over there. didn't even get to see that one so sometimes you win sometimes you don't here at Salem it's a little bit tougher